Can I paraphrase the question to make sure everyone's clear about that? Because <laughs> I stopped listening the first bit. So I, I've broken it down into two bits. How shall we copy the other parties? And B, how should we keep our distinctiveness? Is that accurate? No. That's great, yeah. And um, can we have the second question? <coughs> Say who you are. I'm Graham Rowe from Sheffield Green Party. Uh -huh. um, the Green Party, I'm afraid, is still very white and middle class. Mm -hmm. How do you think we need to change that? And the third <coughs> one? Uh, uh, Jake Welsh, Central Lancashire Green Party. Um, <coughs> the Green Party, as far as I'm aware, is only political party which has a rule denying that leader and deputy leader cannot both be female. Um, how do um, the candidates feel about the gender balance that we've got and, <coughs> and if we should change it or not? Did everyone know about that rule? You might want to explain it. <laughs> uh, we're going to give the candidates two minutes each for these questions. So, um, can you take up or answer the three questions in whatever order you like and, you know, and spend as much time, but you've only got three minutes. Sorry, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure then. <laughs> okay, can I start with you, Rich? Okay. Oh, <laughs> Is that better? Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, Jake, leader and deputy, the gender balance. The gender balance thing uh, means briefly that if we altogether choose to elect um, a, a woman to be leader, then the deputy has to be the man and vice versa. Okay. Um, how do I feel about that? Well, I understand why we put it in place. I think that. I think that it can lead to odd situations. What happens if what happens if one of us on that side of that agenda gets 75, 80 percent of the vote, and the blokes get 15 percent of the vote, or something like that? And then, you know, you can be hooray! I'm, I'm new deputy leader, but I had a very, very small uh, vote in, in my favour. Um, I think it's something that we do need to address. Possibly we need to look at saying at least one person uh, of the two must be female. Maybe we have a slightly different system, which I believe some of the Green parties do, where they say, okay, you don't have people standing separately for leader and deputy, you just, everybody stands for leader, and then it's the, the top ranking male and female out of those two that become elected. It, there are different models, but certainly I think it's something that we need to, to debate and we could look at. Um, Graham, white, middle class, yes, and these things. Also middle aged, although I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible. Um, the, the, when I was um, on uh, GPEC, the, the treasurer was a chap called Carl Hussenbuck, and we used to talk about this quite often. And um, we did try to sort of um, look at how we might reach out with the groups, and we went to some uh, local Muslim groups <coughs> and so on as well. Um, when I was in Brighton, uh, there was a, a mosque on one of the local roads. I went and spoke to the folks there. Um, we have to be sort of as we are mainly white and middle class, we have to get out of our comfort zone and go and talk to people in other areas. You have to make sure that your meetings are accessible to people in other areas uh, uh, as, as well. Um, oh, well, I don't get much time, sorry. I didn't get to answer Steve's question. Okay. So, on Steve's question, um, I think it's a very interesting one, and I do think that there is a lot that we can learn from the other parties, but we have to do it for our own green filter, if you like, um, certainly around organisation, and a little bit of um, professionalisation as well. I don't think we should be worried about that. Um, looking at what those parties are doing in local areas and also nationally. Um, so when I talk about a green filter, and I'm talking about fundraising, you know, we need more money. That would make things a lot easier for us, um, have more staff in the office, be able to have better media, we could do training, which is all the things that the other parties do and we really need to do. So, but obviously we don't want the sort of fundraising that the other parties have, but we mustn't worry too much about sort of talking about fundraising, professionalising it, getting 
some professional fundraisers in, talking to the right kind of businesses, green businesses who might be able to help us as long as we're very clear about the ethical criteria and I know that discussion is going on at DPRC. Um, so that's just a, a small flavour because we don't have much time. Um, Graham's point on the um, white middle class, yes, it, it's an ongoing issue. Um, I'm very proud of the work that has been done by Green Party women actually just uh, addressing the gender issue and there's certainly been a lot of success and I think that that's a really good model um, about how we, we can sort of expand that out um, sort of ethnic minorities um, and class as well. Um, and you know, we don't have much time, I'm happy to talk about that a bit later on. But also we just need to get out into different communities and talk to people and frame our policies in a way that, that speaks to people. So actually talking about jobs, housing, food prices, you know, those kind of things is our message. Finally on the gender balance, I think what we've got is one of those situations, it was sort of a compromise that's ended up not really pleasing anyone. I believe in positive discrimination, that is something that um, you know, we've looked at through Green Party women. The Green Party has to balance off the other parties who are so bad, so I think we should have an at least one woman. That would be what I would like to see. Thanks. Um, gosh, there's a lot to say in just three minutes. Um, how do we stay distinct? Sorry, two minutes, gosh. <laughs> how do we stay distinct? Um, well, what attracts me, what attracted me to the Green Party and still I'm very proud of is that we're a grassroots bottom-up party. Um, so, so that's a very distinctive thing from other parties. We're a true leftist party um, and our policies reflect that. We're the only anti-austerity party that there is. Um, and what can we learn from other parties? Well, I think that we can learn a lot as an ex-Labour party member. Um, I think that we need to build a, a strong regional presence. We need, we've built out of London and the South East, but we really need to start fighting the fight elsewhere and allowing regional parties to do that. We need to simplify our message so that it's accessible to people and we can broaden our appeal. Um, we need to diversify our fundraising, speaking to trade unions, which we've done successfully in Brighton. Um, I wrote a document which got money in from Lush for the Brighton Pavilion campaign. So there are some businesses which tick our ethical and environmental boxes. And we need to push for ambitious member recruitment. Um, second question, white middle class. This is something as an elected representative that, in, it, that frustrates me to the <coughs> nth degree. Um, I would not, I've come from a working class background, both my brothers are long term unemployed um, and it frustrates me because our policies are for the people who by and large, and it's just by and large because there are some places like Solihull where they are voting for us, but by and large they're not the people who are voting for us and that has to change. Um, I could go on and on about that, but I won't. Um, it's about repackaging our policies basically so that they're accessible to a, a broader uh, number of people. And finally, I think I've got five seconds left, on the gender balance question, I understand why it was put in at that time and perhaps this was overlooked, but I agree with Caroline that we should have an, at least one woman rule. Thank you. We're still running exactly on time and I'd like you to, uh, I'd like to give you an opportunity to um, come back to the panel on any of those three questions. So, does anybody want to specifically address one of the panel members on any of those three questions before we <coughs> look for more questions? Okay. Who are you? Um, my name is um, James Tompkinson, um, a member of the Green Party in Bolton. Um, I, I just wanted to address the issue of um, gender balancing versus um, positive discrimination and say that the strength of gender balancing, which I know this contest cannot change that rule, it can only be done by a conference, but the strength of gender balancing is that it sets out a testament of um, equality that the Green Party believes in gender equality and um, positive discrimination um, has had negative consequences um, in different areas and um, I feel that if the party does go down this concept of 
positive discrimination, then that um, that put a um, I watched them cut a fire at it's like put a fire in something and eventually undermines it and within ten years there will be no um, there will be no commitment to gender equality in the Green Party elections because it will undermine it. Gender so equality. Can I ask you to address your point to um, um, a particular panel member? What's the um, question that you want to come um, back to them on? Well, Richard, that's Steve's question that you get time for. Is that, is that okay. 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 Thanks. Um, yeah. The, the things, things came up. The other two have said quite a few things that I, I do agree with. The few things I do agree with as well. We need to be much sharper and much better at, at fundraising. And um, some guy approaching me looking down for a talk. <laughs> Right, so we might get need to be much savvier in using the media. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to be better at fundraising. We need to be better at um, at, um, at uh, addre addressing the uh, uh, reaching out to a wider audience. Um, and I, I think that's something that we can learn from the other parties. The other parties are quite canny about how they keep their policies but uh, manage to put them across in a very succinct <coughs> way. We're not always very good at that. Our, our policies tend to be quite wordy, and I think that we have difficulty getting the proper <coughs> short, sharp messages. I think that's something we need to improve on. Something else I think we can emulate from other parties. If someone sees you on TV, and the first thing they're going is, what the hell is he wearing? What is he looking at? All those kind of things. Uh, then you've lost the message <coughs> because they're already thinking about what you look like rather than what you're saying. So I've not never necessarily known the conference who's standing around wearing a tie the whole time, I'm usually wearing a hat and sort of sitting in a sort of fairly scruffy corner on my own, something like that. But I do acknowledge that when you're in front of the media, when you're in front of the TV in particular, you have to put yourself in a certain way, you have to appear in a certain way, just so that it's not one more barrier for the people watching you to overcome. And that's the media's game, and sometimes you have to play the media's game a bit. And there are other things that you don't have to do with the media, but, but certainly in terms of how you look, just not being so weird in your appearance that it makes hair turns everyone against you. Um, what, and what keeps us distinct? Our policies keep us distinct. Right. Um, Caroline has to come back on the point that um, James raised discrimination. Yeah. And, and, well, I think, thanks James for raising that. It's certainly, we have had a lot of debate already about the gender balance and where we might go from here. But through the work that I've done with the Green Party women, and actually being one of the people who was really encouraged to stand by other women saying we need more good women, there are more, I believe, that there are more barriers to women. The barriers that women put on themselves, but also the barriers that are out there in society. And we just have to look at the makeup of our parliament to see that there is a massive problem here. We need to be cautious, but I think we need to be aware of those barriers. And I do believe that we need to use positive discrimination carefully um, because society is very much against that and we actually need to create a balance. 